Hi there, buddy. You want to go back over to Pollyanna's house? I'm going to go drop you off, go get a hike in, and I'm going to go to work. And, uh, since the vlog is already a pre... How dare you? How dare you? Sorry, guys. Since the vlog is already pre-recorded, since I'm working today, I'm just going to keep doing everything on the camera phone today. We'll switch over to the new camera tomorrow. I charged it up last night. Haven't even taken it out of the box yet. Well, I just dropped Draw off, and as soon as he got out of the car and he saw Pollyanna, he just started jumping, losing his mind. And you know, you know, I was thinking, I was like, God, it really feels good sometimes to make somebody happy. Whoa, look at the moon over there. Can you see that? Whoo! Anyway, I was watching him just spazzing out as he realized that he was gonna get another day of playing with Pollyanna all day. And I was thinking to myself, God, what a great feeling it is to know that you made something that happy. And I just think like, all the people that go out on the internet or out in the real world, and they just look for reasons to inflict pain on everybody else or reasons to criticize, and I just go, what do you get out of that? What feeling of fulfillment do you get from waking up and going out and trying to ruin somebody's day for them having a smile on their face? I don't get it. I'm gonna go in and cook some breakfast, go for a hike, and start thinking about heading, I think, northeast? I don't know, wherever Palmdale is. All right, let's start this up. Pretty noisy out here in the park. Hi. <laughs> what a cool cloud just hanging there. Beautiful. Now this is definitely the hard part of this trail. But we're only like 10 minutes from the top now. All right, gang, we made it. Just cause I have to work. Doesn't mean it's an excuse to take a day off. I took a day off yesterday because I had a ton of errands I wanted to run, but if you can humanly possible squeeze in a workout, my advice is that's the, always been the key to my weight loss whenever I've lost a lot of weight was just forcing myself to do it as many days a week as possible. I always try like, they always say three to five days. I always shoot for five to six and uh, that's what I'm trying to do. So if you're lacking motivation in your own life to do this, go do it in the morning. Do it first thing when you wake up. Even wake up early because you'll feel much better the rest of the day and you get it out of the way. That's everybody's advice, pretty much always. Like pro athletes, I always hear them say, man, if I don't get in there in the morning, I'll never get it in. So that's my advice. I hope I'm helping to motivate you with this. Making my way out to the desert, again. Different desert, but desert nonetheless. Well, welcome to beautiful Palmdale, folks. Is it everything you hoped? Look at all the Joshua trees out there. Of course, I'm on a Graham Parsons obsession right now when I drive. I always pretty much like find something, like stick with it for about a month. And I've been on the Graham Parsons Obsession, so this is highly welcome since I've been listening to that Live at the Avalon album the whole way out. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things I'm noticing the most out here is a lot of boarded up buildings. If you like abandoned places, man, this is like a haven for it because it's nothing but boarded up shacks out here. Probably old meth dens for all I know. I just saw a sign that says for sale, firewood and goats. Look, evidence of the super bloom out here still. They're missing part of an airplane there, it looks like. We're not filming here. We're filming across the street, so I, I'm, a, I'm allowed to film this. But I just thought this was crazy, because when I drove by, I'm like, hey, what the hell happened to the rest of the plane? Maybe it's an art installation. And then I look, and if you look back there, you can see the rest of the plane. 
somehow they've separated the plane and it's back in there. See where that red, yellow stripe and everything is? And they've got some sort of weird water towery looking deal as well. Other thing I noticed about out here, lots of people with rusted out, turned over, picked apart cars, like laying in the middle of their property. Not any organized fashion, literally it could be out in the middle of nowhere like you'd think nobody owned it. All right, Lionhearts, I have to go to work. I'm even wearing the same clothes that I wore in the vlog when I recorded it, I just noticed, so enjoy this. For you old time Hollywood fans, you're going back to Palm Springs. That's right, your old pal Jordan, when I was there last week, I didn't just do Desert X, I didn't just do Robo Lights. I also went to William Powell and Clark Gable's Palm Springs Estates. So enjoy. Boom! Well, since I never know when I'm gonna end up working sometimes, I decided since I was out in Palm Springs doing all those great art vlogs that you guys have already seen, I was gonna make a little detour for a place that I've wanted to see for a very long time. This was the house of William Powell, the very last house of William Powell. One of my all-time favorite actors, I know I've told you guys numerous times about how much I love William Powell, but um, he lived here pretty much for like the last 20 years of his career. He and his wife, Diana Lewis, who had the nickname of Mousy. This was where they spent their last few years of their life. Um, William Powell was known as Nick from Nick and Nora in The Thin Man. He was in my favorite movie of all time, My Man Godfrey. And um, he was at one point Carol Lombard's husband. And he was supposed to be Gene Harlow's husband. Uh, they were engaged, but unfortunately, she ended up dying. Um, I think many of you may have already seen the vlog where I kind of talked about that, but she had basically um, had failing kidneys, and uh, her mother was a Christian scientist and didn't believe in having doctor care, so. She ended up dying at a very early age, and uh, William Powell was extremely heartbroken. He paid for her funeral, eventually paid for her mother's funeral when her mother passed, and uh, many thought would never move on, would never uh, get over that loss, and he did. He met Diana Lewis on a movie, and this was the house they shared together throughout his entire retirement. To me, William Powell is just like the ultimate gentleman actor. He was extremely likable, he could be tough, but he had a charm about him, and when I actually saw the movie Ed Wood, and saw Johnny Depp portraying Ed Wood, the first thing I thought of was he was doing William Powell, because William Powell just, he had this mid-Atlantic uh, way of speaking, and just this interesting, unique quality that you really couldn't pinpoint, it was just this Many people just called it the gentlemanly quality, and in fact, there aren't many books written about his life, but the one that I do have was called Gentleman. And um, unfortunately, you know, William Powell was uh, one of those actors who started out in silent film, and then MGM was um, smart enough to give him a whole career of being a uh, leading man, where he had always been like a villain. And uh, William Powell ended up acting, I think his last movie was Mr. Roberts, so he acted from the 20s until about the late 60s, I want to say. And uh, his birthday's the day before mine, so that's another kinship that we share. But I just, I always love William Powell, and uh, ever since I found out that he 
um, spent like the last 20, 25 years of his life living out in Palm Springs, I realized that it was all in one house and that they had actually commemorated that house with that plaque right there. So I wanted to come out and show you guys. I'm kind of wondering if that's common out here in Palm Springs because like some of the um, neighborhoods I've seen were called Movie Colony East, Movie Colony West and whatnot. And I'm wondering if like if a celebrity lived there, if maybe they did that with a lot of them and put um, a commemorative plaque on it. One of the ones I really want to see, and maybe I'll go out and see it right now before I take off, is uh, Harpo Marx. Well, all the Marx brothers lived out here, but Harpo Marx had a big mansion out here. And uh, a few years ago, um, the night that I met Roddy Roddy Piper for the very first time, we were hanging out outside. He told me, I said, what are you up to next? And he said, I'm driving out to Palm Springs in the morning, and I'm going to be on something that the WWE is making called Legends House. They're going to have a bunch of us old legends live in a house together. Baby Jesus. That's what he would always say. He would always say baby Jesus. So they filmed, they all met up at this house and they filmed the whole series, which was a really funny series. If you're a YouTuber, Rhett and Link are in there. Um, they filmed it all out at Harpo's Mansion. So I think I'm going to look up the address real quick and I might drive out there and just show you the grounds because... Um, in the very first episode when they all arrive, Roddy has one of those moments where he's not sure about living with a bunch of people that he doesn't know all that well, even though he should. He, uh, he goes for a walk around the neighborhood, and uh, I'd love to go see it. Yep, some of these houses definitely put the, uh, the celebrity who owned it, because they just drove past one, and there was a big plaque outside that said the Allen Ladd Estate. I looked up the Harpo Marx address, and it's like 25 miles away. Apparently it was back where the uh, the art installations were. I should have just looked it up then, but Clark Gable's uh, old Palm Springs house is right up here, so I'm going to go there instead. Well, all this property right here, now it belongs to Kirk Douglas' son, Joel Douglas, the uh, producer, but this was Clark Gable's Palm Springs estate. And it looks like they've removed like whatever sign there was, but I think, I know it was recently up for sale, but it's always been labeled the uh, Clark Gable and Carol Lombard Estate. Um, you can kind of see the house a little bit. You might be surprised that it was kind of known as the Pink Palace or the Pink, Pink House, but it looks like right there would have been where the uh, Clark Gable nameplate would have been that most of these have. It's too bad you can't see too much of it. I don't want to be too intrusive, but just knowing that Clark Gable lived here is worth checking out for me. Check out that view, guys. I am done. Short day, three hour day. Time to go home and find my joster. Oh heck yeah, look what I'm driving next to. Oh yeah. Well, it was kind of a bummer day for my optics. I scratched up my glasses pretty bad today on set. And then when I was driving home, you guys remember how the other day I was telling you I've been, I was putting off doing my taxes because every time I do my taxes, as soon as I get that refund check, some calamity goes awry. Well. On my drive back, I'm going down one of those interstate roads, and look what happened. <sighs> yep. Rock blew off of a truck and left a big freaking crack in my windshield. Now, enough complaining about glass that I'm not going to get fixed. Let's go find Jaw. Why do I get the feeling that there's something that you can put on a windshield, like, when it's only crack that amount. Isn't there something you can do to it so that it doesn't get any worse? I don't know why I should have to pay for that. I didn't do anything wrong. Who is that? Are you waiting on me? Hi, crazy bird. Hey, gang. So about three days ago was a guy who I really admire and uh, a guy who I considered a friend. 
it was his birthday, and he passed away uh, a couple of years ago. I guess this summer it would be two years. Uh, he's a professional wrestler named Roddy Roddy Piper, and I got to know him in my days of hanging out at the comedy store. And uh, I know I've mentioned to you guys different stories about him throughout the vlogs, um, but I just I didn't mention anything on his birthday, and I wanted to acknowledge it because there's very few people that you ever meet in your life that you can tell you things, and when you look in their eyes, you know that they're telling you they're a prophet. They're telling you a life lesson that you'll take on with you everywhere. And uh, and he was one of those guys. Every time I talked to him, uh, every time I was actually around him, uh, I just found him to be like a total genius. Not at all what you would expect. He was an extremely brilliant guy and uh, had a basically a street knowledge of the world that you can't buy. Anyway, all of a sudden, today while I was working, something popped into my head and I said, wait a minute, years ago when I used to plug my phone in and update it on my computer, I, I feel like I filmed Roddy doing an impromptu story at the comedy store. And so I looked through all my files. It took me about an hour and a half and I found that file. So I want to share it with you guys. Um, Roddy Piper was a past paid regular at the comedy store. Um, he would go up and he would tell great wrestling stories. He would just tell life stories and he could, you think I can hold your attention? That guy can hold your attention. Anyway, um, this particular night he decided to tell a story about when he was in Guatemala, um, there to make a karate movie. And I'm just going to head and let Roddy do the talking from here on out. Hope you guys enjoy this. I miss you, Roddy. Oh, sword, old cop. And these seven ninjas were doing this. <laughs> okay, I just roll with it, I guess, you know. And they were like doing this sword thing and they were coming this close, you know. The real sword? Real swords. Like they weren't uh, they weren't sharp, but there were seven of them. Yeah. They don't come <laughs> <laughs> they need to be real sharp, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. And um, so, I, oh, so there's this one ninja, like they've got a, uh, a real strict code amongst themselves. But the, 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 the ninja, I think I saw that. Well, yeah, I guess you know, I'm secret handshake and stuff. But, um, this one ninja, he liked to smoke pot. <laughs> yeah, I had some. <laughs> and like, I think if I told the other ninjas, he would have died or something in a thousand cuts because he was, it was like disrespectful oh, to him. Oh, big time. Okay. Um, How did he know that you even had pot? Because I was smoking it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you do? I had How did this happen? Well, because what happened was we were like right next to Guatemala and there was a war going on at night time. Okay, so you're in Guatemala next door. Okay, wait, let's just paint the stage. You're in uh, the jungles of Guatemala shooting a karate movie where they're hitting you with swords, almost hitting you with swords. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, there's a freaking war going on as yeah, well. Especially at night because it was cold. <laughs> and the rebels would quite try to come in the uh, the city at nighttime and you could see them bombing. Um, and then they so it's noon. And that you know those rowing machines that are you familiar? Yeah. Not at all. Okay. Yeah, the so anyway, I got a rowing machine, it's noon. And like it's really hot. And I'm rowing and here comes Sonny Chiba and he sits down. So I'm rowing. Here comes one ninja, another ninja, another. It's like I'm rowing for the United States now. So it's like a competition. Stop. Yeah. And they weren't gonna leave. I I rowed for one hour and twenty minutes before they left. And I was really sunburned. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Irish. You know? And so that, uh, uh, thank you. 